you are a big buyer of any ultra modern sports card, I'd highly consider what I have to say. Rather, what Eric Whiteback just said. Dog made some great points, though. If you're going to, like, raise the print runs and everything, and then on top of it, we keep seeing all these new random one-off products that nobody yeah, cares about, right. that have no vetted interest into the marketplace. People, You don't even really know what the product's supposed to be. We saw Flux last year and all these things that they launch into Chronicles and then make recon. into a full-blown product recon. Stop focusing on those and focus on your flagship product, on your on the thing that you do well, right? Shout out to him for making this fantastic post. He says, Trevor Lawrence already has 6,151 different rookie cards. For comparison, Tom Brady has just 135 of them. And we're not even talking about the career path of a guy like Trevor Lawrence versus Tom Brady. But hey, at the end of the day, buy what you want, collect who you enjoy watching, spend what you can afford. I just think the fact that Trevor Lawrence has 45 times the amount of rookie cards that Tom Brady has should be talked about. I think it's just as confusing whether there's multiple manufacturers if there's this many sets. It's kind of the same thing for the collector. You have to decide which rookie's best. And we don't really know because trying to speculate this is really difficult. That's why it's always go with the gold parallels from Top's update. You know, like the less rare than the green shimmer parallels from the same set. It's because it's the iconic parallel. That's generally why they hold a premium. And we see that across other years as well. I'm personally really worried about the secondary market effect of this of these rollouts. And you hit on print runs, 24,000 total different cards with the variations. And that's wild. Estimated. And that's 24,000 yeah. card checklist. Yeah, and then, of course, there's yeah. hundreds, thousands, tens yeah. of thousands, possibly yeah. Hundred, yeah. hundreds of thousands of every single one of those 24,000 right. right. cards printed. Right. Do the multiples yeah. on that. Yeah. There are millions yeah. and millions and millions and millions and so upon what's millions happen? of Prism football cards out there. Yeah. I made a whole video about Prism numbers um, and different numbered cards that are just not as rare as people think because of how many sets they're releasing right, right now in the sports card hobby and how many different parallels are coming out. <laughs> So takeaways, if you are buying to collect, it has never been better than right now. There are so many cool inserts, so many cards. So enjoy all the great inserts and cards. I'm not saying cards are bad in the modern era. It just takes more skill if you're investing. If you're actually truly viewing yourself as an investor, you need to buy the right stuff, whether it's Topps Chrome, whether it's Topps Flagship, whether it's a specific parallel. You know what I'm saying? You have to make sure you're identifying the premium sets that are actually gonna hold value long term. Yeah, and what's gonna happen to these players' prices to Mac? Yeah. Even if Mac Jones, who you know I'm not particularly high on, even if Mac Jones goes on to be a, a recurring Pro Bowl quarterback, he's got so many bloody rookie cards in existence that you can't even figure out like what it should be worth. Now, I did an analysis a while back on a data dive, and I showed that Gary Payton, 10 rookie cards total. That's it. Oh, wow. Kobe, 101. And 96 was the year yeah. things took off. LeBron has 486. Zion Williamson, ironically, 2019 different rookie cards in existence. And but it's only little... going up. And forget 10 or 100 rookie cards, there was a time in the pre-90s where people just had one rookie card going back in history. Joe Montana, Julius Irving, Mickey Mantle, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, it goes on and on. One rookie card, Terry Bradshaw, Michael Jordan, could be argued the star card, but... That's the trend, and now that has vastly changed since the late 80s and, and changed even more so till now. All right, so like I said, we're going to count down the 20 highest PSA 10 pop-counted cards of all time, and we're going to run through these uh, pretty quick. Number 20 is a 2019 Topps Chrome Fernando Tatis Jr. rookie, 12,700 plus. Number 19, 2020 Bowman Paper, Jason Dominguez, first Bowman card, uh, 13,000 plus. Number 18, 2019 Panini Prism Kobe White. Uh, number 17, a 1989 Tops traded Ken Griffey Jr. rookie. Number 16, Bo Bichette's rookie from 2020 Tops. Uh, number 15, 2019 Panini Prism LeBron James base card. 13,537 PSA 10s exist as of the recording of this video. Number 14, also LeBron, 2018 Panini Revolution. The 2018 cards were his first years in a Laker uniform. Number 13 is a Zion Williamson, 2019 Panini Mosaic. Uh, number 12, Kyle Lewis, 2020 Tops rookie. Number 11, 2020 tops, Jordan Alvarez, orange jersey uh, rookie. And now into the top 10, a 2019 tops, Pete Alonzo rookie. 
Number nine is a 2020 Topps Chrome Lewis Robert rookie, 17,000 plus PSA 10s. Number eight, 2020 Topps Gavin Lux rookie. Number seven, another Lewis Robert. This is just the Topps base uh, from 2020 Topps. Number six is 2018 Panini Prism Luka Doncic rookie. Pop count of just short of uh, 19,000 PSA 10s. This is the most valuable card in the top 20. Uh, number five, 2019 Topps Fernando Tatis. Again, we saw the Topps Chrome earlier, but this is the Topps base. Number four is our first card over 20,000. That's 2019 Panini Prism Ja Morant rookie. Pop count of 21,476. Number three, 2018 Topps Update. Ronald Acuna rookie as uh, at bat in, uh, in blue jersey variation, which is the, the common variation. Number two from the same set, 2018 Tops Update Juan Soto rookie. Again, the, the standard batting variation. And the number one highest pop counted PSA 10 card of all time is 2019 Panini Prism Zion Williamson with a pop count of 22,061. Uh, that is uh, as of the recording of this video. All right, just some initial observations. First thing is that there's only two sports represented in the top 20. It's all baseball and basketball. That's 13 baseball cards and seven basketball cards. And the other thing that just really jumps out is that with one exception, every single card in the top 20 is ultra modern, uh, 2018 to, to, to present. The only exception is the 89 tops traded King Griffey Jr. Every other card on the top 20 is uh, 2018 to present. The first time we would see a non-baseball or basketball card would be actually be a golf card. From 2001 Upper Deck Tiger Woods uh, rookie, that would rank 22nd. And the first time we'd see a football card is 33rd. That was 1989 Topps traded Barry Sanders rookie. No uh, hockey nor soccer card appears in the top 100. And, you know, on the surface, these sort of observations might be what you would predict. You know, basketball and baseball dominating makes a lot of sense. Ultra modern dominating makes a lot of sense, especially based on what we know of what's happened over the last few years with the, with the 2020 and 2021 price boom and just the flood of orders that PSA and other companies received. And there's a whole bunch of new people entering the hobby and, and ripping wax and, and sending stuff off for grading. So, you know, on the surface, all that stuff makes sense. And, and, and that's not really what I'm, but what I remember from the first video, just being so amazed by, and so on, on this video, I'm not that amazed by it because I, I know it from the first video, but you know, I've, I've been in the hobby many, many years, you know, I'm a collector, investor, dealer hybrid, we'll say, and, you know, the investing side of that, if you, if you want to be a, an investor, you have to pay attention to pop counts is a very important part of investing, you know, very important piece of the puzzle. So, you know, I follow pop counts quite a bit. And I, I, I have for many, many years. And as someone who has followed pop counts for many years, these numbers are just ludic ludicrous. 20,000 copies in a PSA 10. I mean, that would have been completely unheard of just a couple of years ago. Now, I don't mean like a couple of years ago would have been 15,000. I mean, a couple of years ago, let's say early 2020, I would guess that the top, you know, PSA 10 pop counted card would have been like under 5,000 and very, very, very few cards were in the, in the multiple thousands. Now, the hobby is much bigger today than it was in, in a few years ago in, in early 2020, let's say. So it makes sense that the pop counts would have all gone gone up and, and the, we would see these increases. But this is extreme. I mean, the, the, the pop counts here are just way outpacing any sort of long-term growth in the hobby. And if you just consider, you know, the supply and demand equation of, of how you determine, value, you know, what sets a card's value, the supply here is just overwhelming demand. Any any sort of demand shifts in any of these players or cards, the supply is just overwhelming them. And, and these cards cannot sustain, you know, have shown that they just cannot sustain their value, at least over the last year and a half. And that would, you know, sort of be my guess to continue move, moving forward. At the end of the day, buy what you want, collect who you enjoy watching, spend what you can afford. What up, everybody? This is Robert Ory, a.k.a. Big Shot Bob, and you're watching Professional Sports Cards. Hey, by the way, go buy my rookie card.